between days three and day five, you're going to have the hard day, right? But what I've seen time after time after time, and what I tell my clients is like, that day is coming and it's going to be a very hard day. But if you can get through that day, I guarantee you that next day you're gone. You're going to go right through that and you're going to be feeling, you're going to, I see it. I see it every week. I see it every week. People coming in here that use the day they got here, haven't slept in two weeks, have, you know, malnourished, hearing voices, audible and visual hallucinations, anything you can imagine. And within those first seven days, typically they're an absolutely brand new person, sleeping better, eating, assimilating to the group environment, um, and getting that clarity of mind back. That was Mike Godfrey, and he is working with Stephanie Rose, a guest I had on this podcast a while back. They are working on a research project together with Incura in Arkansas. The research is around a supplement, NAD, which aids cells in our body to convert food into energy. It also boosts enzyme activity and creates an optimal environment for healthy brain functioning and the repair of DNA. Those few checkboxes cover a lot of territory, and if you are someone who's coming down, Gaining support in these areas would be priceless. You will hear in this interview that NAD helps boost energy, focus, mental clarity, and brain functioning, and reduces addiction cravings and withdrawal symptoms by repairing the body's cells. This is not an advertisement for NAD, but an informative conversation with people who are researching NAD as a way to engage with those who currently have disordered use associated with a myriad of substances in a harm reductionist way. One point to abstaining from a substance is so that clear thinking can be obtained. And NAD seems very much a vehicle to get people to a place of clear thinking. When we can transition into sobriety and clearer thinking in a loving and supportive surroundings, success is all the more possible. When we can do that in short order and get on with living, success, however we define it, becomes inevitable. Stephanie and Mike, thank you so much for joining me. I'm really interested in learning more about NAD and your uh, research that in the research you're doing on perceptions of mental health and recovery after receiving NAD. Stephanie, can you talk to me a little bit about, give me a primer of the research you're doing and how you got involved in it and why it's so exciting? So um, I'm an assistant professor uh, for the University of Central Arkansas Addiction Studies program and very passionate about harm reduction. One of the biggest populations that I've noticed, you know, that do not have, who do not have access to medication assisted treatment are worse, those who abuse stimulants. And so, you know, we have different types of um, medication assisted treatment to help people with withdrawal. However, when I came across NAD, I realized this is really kind of a game changer because this can assist so many people, you know, really no matter what substance they're addicted to. And so it's also a more affordable option. It's also not something that patients, clients will be um, dependent on. And so with stimulant abuse, it's it hasn't gone away. It's continued to be an issue, especially in Arkansas, but also nationwide. And so you know, we saw a lot of options, you know, during the opioid epidemic. And, you know, I have tried to advocate, hey, we don't need to leave these folks behind who are addicted to stimulants. And so I had already known Mike Godfrey, you know, just within the field and through uh, education. And so when I learned more about NED, I had to partner up with him. You know, we have some great quantitative data, but we really want to get that qualitative piece and really hear from folks about how they perceive their own abilities pre and post treatment of NAD to maintain their recovery. Okay, before we move on, what is NAD and how are you using it? So I'm going to, what I know about is it's a very important coenzyme in our body that um, is very beneficial for a multitude of reasons. And I think it would be best if I let Mike talk a little bit more about that. So yeah, she hit it right on the head. It is a coenzyme naturally produced by the body that <clears throat> we do lose the production of it naturally through through the life process with age. But substance use has an adverse effect on it as well. 
and we will do an IV infusion with to help naturally boost our clients back up to a, a, a higher level of functioning rather than the MAT treatment or um, just a natural, you know, detox without anything. And what we see is that, you know, within the span of, I would say, 10 to 15 days max, that all of a sudden we have somebody who is, I mean, back to functioning mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, and it seems to aid in all of those different areas um, with the clarity of thought, the sleeping, the depression, the anxiety, um, treating, I mean, we treat a lot of different stuff with it, and it's kind of, I don't want it to sound like that cure-all one thing, but it seems to have a positive impact on every area. So this sounds, um, you know, from what you guys are saying, it sounds very much like there's cellular shifting in the body with this um, and I'm, I don't want to call it a drug. Um, would you guys call it a drug or would you call it a supplement? Um, you know, that's not honestly something I've necessarily thought of that way. I would call it, you know, it's like melatonin, right? Our body produces melatonin naturally. And sometimes maybe we don't produce enough of it on our own or, and, and we want to supplement that. So maybe a supplement is better. You know, um, we know that for testosterone maybe you're not producing the testosterone you need and we can supplement your testosterone with you know shots or you know i think this kind of falls into that category of a more of a holistic approach to solving issues that our body like not only naturally the life process in aging this will already be produced less naturally but with the setback that we see in our clients with the the long term especially substance misuse that we can we can do these iv infusions and, and essentially bring them back to life you know in a matter of days and i say that because i've you know i've had clients walk in the door and seven days later i see them i'm like are you new are you working here like i don't know i mean they're just it's like they're coming back to life in front of my eyes within days, which is not something you see with the, the Suboxone, the methadone, the, the regular detox. And, you know, I know that the clarity of mind is something that you really like to talk about. And that's one of the main, you know, one of our main punchlines when we get somebody who's calling and <clears throat> interested in what we do is like, we talk about getting that clear thinking back, you know, because yes, you can, Stop, you can desist from the substance use, right? But the thought process, like, why is this a bad environment for me to be in? Why do I need to maybe not work at this job anymore? Why do I maybe not need to live in this area that I live in? Why do I maybe not need to continue hanging out with the people I was hanging out with? Stuff like that, like that clarity where you're able to, like, process the information that's coming because – you know, we're going to hit it hard where we're at with the group therapy and the individual therapy. And like, that's a lot to take in when you've just been using for so long. You know, when you talk about like the opiate and the, the stimulants and the substances more like fentanyl and, and heroin and methamphetamines, you know, and even alcohol too. But like when you have a long history of using, you know, something that it's, as I continue to do this more, it's like, I tell my clients all the time, if I take this pencil and I throw it at your face, you're going to do this. You know what I mean? What you have trained your body to do over these years is to do this or this or whatever to stress, to happiness, to good day, to bad day, to whatever it is. And we're literally having to do the cognitive restructuring of the mind to react differently to any stimulant, good, bad, negative, positive, new job, old job, bad job, rain, sunshine whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I had a conversation with my, you know, six year old nephew not long ago and, <laughs> and he was getting into a pattern of lying and, and what have you. And I was like, you know, you want to look at your life as like practice. You know, you, you, there is no, there's nowhere to go in your life. You know, you're just doing what you do. You want to, you want to practice that direction that you want to go. And if you constantly practice things that you don't want to be doing forever, well, why are you doing it? Right? Like, and, and it was just about awareness. 
and you know he's not on you know he's not on stimulants or, or or anything like that so he can process that but he's still even as a six-year-old already not thinking clearly because he is practicing things that he he has admitted he doesn't want to be doing um stephanie do you have anything to say about uh, about what we've been addressing well one thing um you know the clarity of mind is so important um i am you know my approach uh, with self-help groups and with addiction is smart recovery. Um, you know, and it, for those that aren't familiar, it uses CBT and MI. It's, you know, heavily based in that. And one of the things I love about it and just really resonate with is um, their high, the higher power in this group, so to speak, is the ability to always be willing to reason. If you can reason, we can talk through urges, we can talk through, you know, impulses and bad days that you find as triggers or things that happen that could be triggers. And so I think getting to that place of mental clarity is going to better help people to reason. And we have better outcomes, um, you know, with treatment when people are, are have that clarity and they're able to identify those coping skills and talk about and, and just increase insight is so powerful. Um, you know, as you said, with your, with your nephew, sometimes, you know, people have those aha moments when they have that, that clarity and they're able to reason through that. And I think that's very powerful. So it's not a program where it's cookie cutter or we, you know, we're shut, we, we, we got to follow a script, you know, it's, it's helping them, um, and we know best outcomes, individualized treatment. And that's another thing that I really appreciate about this particular program. Well, when we, you know, we're, we're, we're here talking about the transition into sobriety. And I'm, I'm, I'm utilizing the term generally, the term sobriety. It doesn't have anything to do with alcohol specifically, of course. What are the differences we're seeing between someone who has gone through an NAD treatment and someone who has not? Good and bad. Can you both kind of chime in on that one of one of the the reasons i got very passionate about this especially in regards to stimulant addiction is because i i don't think that people were necessarily recognizing how difficult it is to withdraw from stimulants you know we hear there's you know alcohol and benzos we know those can be fatal to, to withdraw from without some medication, you know, assistance. Um, you know, we have MAT to help people improve their functioning, but not necessarily, you know, um, relieve that need to, you know, be on something in order to function. And so, um, you know, I have have worked with people who have who have with drawn from these stimulants and it is very rough on them yet there's there's nothing out there and so i'm not sure if that's a stigma issue um we hear a lot of stigma surrounding meth but we're seeing more and more uh, especially 18 to 26 year olds becoming addicted to prescription stimulants and graduating to both cocaine and meth once they can, can no longer afford or have access to the prescription stimulants. And so even with the prescription stimulants, it still creates a, you know, a withdrawal period. And it takes a long time for people to recover from that. They, it's hard for them to think clearly. It's hard for the brains to start producing dopamine and serotonin again. And, um, it, and, you know, I've, I've had people who were pretty much almost like zombies laid up in bed, just no energy. And what's the time frame on a, per, on a person who has a moderate substance use disorder around stimulant? So the clients I've worked with, it's taken up to about a month for them to even start feeling like they have a little bit of energy to function. And... You know, we want to help people maintain their employment if possible, maintain being able to take care of their families and their other, you know, uh, activities of daily functioning. Um, these aren't folks, you know, who have the option of going in, you know, into inpatient treatment all the time, especially 
given you know their substance of choice there aren't a lot a lot a lot of specialized programs for that and even if even in an inpatient treatment center 30 days is a long time to be dealing with the discomfort of withdrawal and maybe a lot of people don't even get to those 30 days because they are so uncomfortable in that situation not only having to be in an inpatient program but having to be in it with so much um, lethargy as well as other sorts of experiences within the, the, the body, uh, the pain and the other things that go with withdrawal. So what's a deciding factor in terms of using NAD and what, do, what are you seeing as a difference uh, between the withdrawal periods as well as the withdrawal symptoms? So um, particularly with the, the, st the stimulant use, which it's, it's fairly mirrored to the opiate withdrawal as well, but I think that there's more of the, from what I see, the, the psychosis aspect with the methamphetamine withdrawal is way a whole other animal, right? Mm -hmm. So the physical withdrawal, you know, with the lack of sleep and the dietary issues, I mean, we're talking about people who, who sleep very little, right? And then end up in a pretty, just as almost just psychosis, right? I mean, it's just, I'll call it what it is, right? And then the methamphetamine um, has a very negative impact on appetite, sleep, mental health functioning, so on and so forth. And so we will get people in, and essentially when I'm work, walking with them through that detox period, the, the way that I typically see it happening is we'll get them in, and most people have used either the day before or the day of, of coming in, right? And we will get them hooked up. And, you know, they will feel okay typically the first day because they've used and they're getting the NAD. So the withdrawal stuff isn't really hurting that badly. Then day two, um, <clears throat> and also this this very, I'm talking like a mid-level, not somebody who's been using daily for 20 years, right? right? <laughs> There's an extent to where it's just going to hurt for a right. few days. You yeah. know? I, 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 my, my focus is moderate, like, of right. course, if you were, if, if you have a, you know, long-term daily use, there's, there's, you're not, you're not getting off the hook. <laughs> it's just no I mean, way the thing is, is with, with methamphetamine is like moderate use for four or five years. Like that's not, that's hard. You know, that's, so what I typically see is day two, you know, it starts to kind of the body aches start to come the, maybe some diarrhea, some nausea, very limited at that point still. And then it's that day three, day four, right? Between days three and day five, you're going to have, you're going to hit the the hard day, right? But what I've seen time after time after time and what I tell my clients is like, that day is coming and it's going to be a very hard day. But if you can get through that day, I guarantee you that next day you're gone. You're going to go right through that and you're going to be feeling, you're going to, I see it, I see it every week. I see it every week. People coming in here that, use the day they got here, haven't slept in two weeks, have, you know, malnourished, hearing voices, audible and visual hallucinations, anything you can imagine. And within those first seven days, typically they're an absolutely brand new person, sleeping better, eating, assimilating to the group environment, um, and getting that clarity of mind back. What is the, you know, as someone who, you know, I mean, I have 20 years, so a large part of like my uh, was was the the work of like I don't want to go back to that <laughs> like like do you have do you have people like oh shit I can get through this in three days like I'm gonna go out and use again so one of our biggest things is that I mean NAD does something that is not being used right NAD treats the inside right not in the place where the addiction is created and manifested it's treating the negative aspects of what the addiction is having onto the body as far as the nutrient deficiency and because we supplement the NAD itself with other vitamins and stuff like that, vitamin C, potassium, so on and so forth, right? And so, you know, and I hate to pick on MAT, but I'm going to because I don't really hate to, but that I feel like is saying the treatment is focused like where the addiction is at. And if you're just like trying to supplement that in a way where the problem is. And so we see a lot of people, I have someone starting on Thursday coming into detox and withdrawal from Swaxon. I'll just be honest. 
And I've had one the week before that, and I had one the week before that, and I'll have one next week, and I'll have one the week after that. So now what we're seeing is we've probably had more people to did detox off of MAT than we have fentanyl. You know, because now our solution is coming out, and people are hearing about us and what we offer, and they're saying, every time I go to treatment, they put me on this stuff, and I can't get off this stuff. You know, and so it's still, and but and, and so, you know, I think we'll dive into this a little bit more later, is right, like we do our NAD treatment, roughly 10 days, and then all of a sudden they're like, I'm, I'm not an addict, I'm not addicted to anything, I've never had a problem, I'm just right back to where I left off before I ever used, and we're like, whoa, 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 like I'm glad you're feeling incredible, and you have that clarity of mind, and you can make great decisions, but we still need to get to like that place of hurt, right? We need to address the childhood trauma, the PTSD, the depression, the anxiety, develop coping skills, the smart recovery, the 12 step stuff, the whatever, you know, I, I try to be very inclusive in our environment as far as like not just pounding people over the head with AA or, or whatever 12 step stuff, or just, I try to, we've actually just like developed a whole new curriculum, which Stephanie kind of, help me in a way with that with we have some smart recovery we have some stuff for some resources I've gotten from the VA with PTSD and trauma and substance use and you know we have some 12 step stuff and we have a little bit of everything because recovery is not going to look the same for everybody right I just had a client in my office before this podcast and he was telling me like my brother doesn't get it he just thinks I'm not used in a week and like I'm good to go and I'm like well you know he in part of his he's like i don't have any addiction in my family no mental health issues in my family and this and that and the other and i'm like you know not only does like everybody's bottom not look the same you know fortunately some people don't have to lose everything before they realize that they're struggling you know what i mean you don't have to be homeless or in prison or you know whatever that looks like to like realize that this is having a very adverse effect on my life and i can't not use even when i don't want to you know what I mean? For me, like that bottom is when you're using against your will. And, and so that's another thing I really wanted to point out that is unique about this whole program is it, you know, it that you guys don't have this cookie cutter. It looks like this. They have a very, uh, a multitude of approaches because we know different approaches work with different you know, uh, sexes with different um, age groups, socioeconomic status. And the other thing I like about this is we know a lot of MAT programs are cash based. So I have a lot of clients who can, simply cannot afford that, you know, and they go, they exchange their medication and, and or get their medication and, and go on. Um, this is much more of an affordable option. And they work with you, um, not just with giving the NAD treatment, but wrapping you up in IOP, um, you know, and, and if like, like Mike said, you know, they have a curriculum that both secular and non-secular. So if someone wants to, you know, utilize their spirituality and, and, you know, they love NA or AA, that's great. And then for, for options for other people, they offer smart recovery. And um, so I think it is a great program. It offers more for uh, a, more of a variety of people because more and more people that I'm seeing um, in, in practice are looking for other options besides AA and NA. And so, um, you know, it's really great to be able to have something like that to refer to because all the programs are very heavily based in AA and NA, which works great for some, but not for everybody. And so what happens to those folks who don't identify with those programs? Something that I've noticed. So, you know, in my journey through, through school and, you know, six years of college to get my master's degree and then like having to work all through that and then working in treatment. So, I worked in, you know, here in Central Arkansas, we have several treatment centers now, but it wasn't so many, you know, eight years ago when I started school. Um, I worked in, so I, at this point, I've worked in the three main treatment centers here in Central Arkansas, right? Um, I worked one of them and I was like the head of food production because I was a chef before I went back to school to do what I do now. 
And so I was the head of food production at that treatment center and I worked in all three locations. And then I worked at another very well-known treatment center here in the area, part-time doing group therapy in the evenings before I started here. And I can promise you this, that if you go into my group room right now, it's the most diverse group of clients you will see anywhere in central Arkansas. And I'm talking the ratio of men to women and people of color. You know, there's a lot of things. And that's something that's like so important to me because so many treatment centers, you know, you'll have 16 guys and three women, you know, or you'll have no people of color in there and this and that and the other. And I mean, we literally had a, our clients were outside smoking the other day and somebody was walking by. And he said, what are all y'all doing here? And they're like, well, we're kind of told him about it. He's in my group room right now, hasn't used in six days. You know what I mean? And so for me, you know, I guess that's just like the heart of a social worker, right? Shout out social workers, is that we just want to meet people where they are and help however we can. And I think that, I don't even know if I'm on topic anymore, but I think that NAD is something that, can allow anybody, no matter what substance they're on, no matter what walk of life you're from, you know, just like the opioid crisis, which is so important now because it doesn't discriminate, right? Anybody's eligible. So then people that, you know, are in rural Arkansas, they get pushed to the side, you know, because it's not as pretty of a drug or whatever, however people want to talk about it. NAD is, does not discriminate. It, it can help anybody. Who is NAD for? I mean, you said anybody, like what, what, how does that break down? Um, I mean, I, I, I think it's for anybody. I've been get, taking NAD for several weeks now and I have more energy. I, I used to, six weeks ago, I was just telling my best friend, I was like, dude, I wake up four or five, six times a night. I cannot sleep. It's terrible. I can't get out of bed. And, you know, I'm clean as, clean as a whistle. And since I've started taking NAD, I'm telling you, I sleep through the entire night and I don't wake up and I wake up refreshed. I'm ready to go. Um, it's helped with my appetite. It's helped with my energy, my focus. Like it's, and I just like, let's try this stuff out because I'm not a big believer in like the fix all kind of stuff. And this stuff has changed my mind. Now, um, we also have treated things like Parkinson's, um, MS, depression, anxiety, PTSD, substance use. So I think that Everybody could use a little bit of NAD, right? All right. Stephanie, your thoughts? I've been referring clients. You know, recently I had a, a female client with a history of opioid abuse. Um, and she's in recovery, but she has lots of long-term health problems due to her uh, previous opioid abuse. And so... Um, and, and still struggles with, you know, urges and different things like that. And um, she has really just ran the gamut with trying to find specialists to help her with some of these issues. And um, I have uh, referred her to, for NAD treatment um, because all these other options aren't working and she's on all these other medications that aren't working. And she's ready to feel better and to try something different. You know, I'm getting a lot more clients who went into various treatment programs that are, you know, here it is. This is very cookie cutter. This is the way it is. This is what you have to do. Everyone has to do this. Um, they're not necessarily uh, sustainable in their recovery with that. Um, and so this is the next step we're, we're like, okay, we tried that. Um, it didn't work out. Um, and, and not to mention it's very costly. You know, people now have very high deductibles with their insurance plans and um, I'm seeing a lot of underinsured and then a lot of treatment centers won't accept certain insurance plans. And our Medicaid system has had an over a uh, complete overhaul in Arkansas and um, they even cap, you know, how many doctor's visits you can have and, and so forth. And you have to go through a lot of approvals for different things. And so having a clinic in, a, in an option that, like I said, is open to all socioeconomic statuses, whether you have, a, you know, reimbursement source or not, um, has been a game changer. I think one of the things that, you know, 
you know, when you, when I think about treatment and the things that I've seen and the conversations I've overheard and been a part of and stuff like that, you know, and this isn't like an advertisement for us, but it's like, we're a small place, right? We have a smaller staff and, you know, there's a lot of people in recovery that work here and the owner started this place because this is how he got clean, right? He went to a place that out of state because no one else offers this in Arkansas and got clean this way and came back. And it was like, he was on a mission. Like people need this and I'm going to provide it. Right. You know, like we have a girl who started today who had a $600 deductible, that she couldn't pay. And we're just like, just go to group. We'll figure it out. You know, um, we have somebody who just, their insurance just got cut off because of some employment stuff. And we're just, just go to group. We'll figure it out. And that's the way all treatments should be, but it's right. not because so much treatment is profit driven. Uh, so much treatment right. is uh, tax money driven. So we have to make sure that you fit a certain category. If you fit a category, then we're going to get paid better. So when do you stop administering NAD? How, how, what's a what's a what's a course look like for NAD? So we have like a protocol of like how much NAD we're going to administer over a certain amount of time. Typically, um, it's going to be right around a ten day period. So you'll come in and essentially um, 10 days straight, right? Now, some clients, you know, the, the, the fluids will go through faster. Some it'll go through slower. The more you move around or blah, 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 like all that can impact the rate at which the IV fluids will go, go through the body. Mm -hmm. um, but it's typically going to be around 10 days. And then at that point, um, you know, we continue with the, the group therapy and the individual therapy and so on and so forth. And then we do have stuff that the clients can purchase on their own after the NAD treatment that we provide, which is essentially free, right? We don't charge for that NAD treatment. It's included with the PHP level of care that's going to be covered by their insurance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's something a lot of people don't understand is like, our owner particularly believes in NAD so much to where he gives it out for free. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that he would probably be mad at me for mentioning, but I think it's worthy of being mentioned because, you know, it's, we, it, we just throw it in. Yeah. We just throw it in. We could just do PHP and we would be getting paid the same from the insurance companies. You know, now some people do have to meet a big deductible before they can come in. Um, and we'll help with resources to find ways to pay for it because, you know, integrity and character always wins. Mm -hmm. um, well, and also we know best practice is no long door policy when someone comes in, right? And not everyone is practicing that, um, but but you guys at Incura are, you know, if, if they come in, you know, and that's, that's another thing is shifting the stigma, especially around stimulants, particularly meth, you know, um, I'm just going to say it. We've always heard it called, you know, the white trash drug. And, you know, that really just diminishes people's worth, you know, when I hear stuff like that. Um, and, and the research shows, no, it's it's not necessarily, it's, it's a lot of college-age kids, you know, that are now using. Um, and so, you know, these are people who... You know, if they lose their job due to their substance usage, you know, or and they're losing their families and, you know, they don't have a pay source, where do they go? You know, and so this is a, this is one of those clinics you can walk in no matter what, you know, state you're in or what kind of resources you have. And it's a no wrong door option. They're going to assist with getting you what you need to to support your survival and get, get you the treatment that you need. What, what has your research thus far kind of shown? And like, what are some of the results that you're finding in your research, Stephanie? So we actually haven't gotten that far yet, um, you know, to, to really uh, be able to talk about that just yet. Um, because with qualitative data, you, you know, you really want a good threshold um, and then to be able to look for those themes, but, um, you know, I mean, I, I'm not sure of anything negative that's come, come from any of it, um, mm -hmm. any of the feedback, um, people generally, you know, report feeling better and more confident. So, um, 
Now, I know you told me, but can you uh, explain how your research is being conducted? So, yes, we are, uh, Mike it is the clinical uh, director and, and typically the one that's going to be, you know, more one-on-one -on -one with the client. And so, um, you know, they're going to be given informed consent. Do you want to participate in this or not? And here's an overview of what we're looking for. Um, if they agree to participate, it's a, it's a short um, survey that asks um, just basic questions, you know, how do you feel or how confident do you feel about your recovery and ability to maintain recovery? Um, how do you feel about your ability to complete activities of daily living? And, and how would you rate your ability to function? And so we want to see what that looks like, you know, before the treatment and after the treatment. Mm -hmm. And get, you know, like I said, we can get numbers, and numbers are really great. But also, I think, especially with something like substance abuse that is so stigmatized, getting those the client's own words, you know, and how they feel is so meaningful. It's such meaningful data. So um, that's why we really wanted to create this qualitative study. Beautiful. When, when do you not say NAD is a good option? when it comes to withdrawal? Like, is there something that they'll be withdrawing from that you're like, no, NAD is not going to help this. You have to, like, NAD can help you as a person. Yeah, sure. But it's not going to help with your withdrawal or it's not going to help you kind of get there. I personally say alcohol, if it's a medical emergency or um, any, like, alarming psychosis, suicidality, homicidality. Um, is that a word? <laughs> Uh, you know, suicidal, pretty much basic protocol for, you know, like mandated reporting stuff, suicidal, homicidal thoughts, um, and then um, the alcohol, you know, obviously if the psychosis is in such a state to where, you know, we think they're going to be a harm to themselves or someone else in their clinic, you know, what we'll do is we'll assist them getting stabilized and then bring them back. Um, and then, at, which time, at which time you would presumably give them NAD? Yes. Okay. So NAD is, is, is that sort of, um, I mean, I, I don't want to utilize the term mandatory, but is that something everybody goes through in your clinic? Yep. Okay. It's just the core of our program. Mm -hmm. It's the, no, it's the core of our program. Um, and everybody wants to go through it. Uh, we've had, you know, sometimes some people have some adverse thoughts and feelings as far as needles, especially with some people's drugs of choice. And so that's something that we have to work with and, you know, be respectful of and, and, and learn to understand. But, you know, when you have a staff that's like compassionate and respectful and courteous and all those things, like you, we've, we've had one person in particular, who was like, it was just, was not a no go. And so we worked with him and then a few days, I think it took about three or four days. And then we were able to like, you know, get him in to the, to the, to the normal operating standard of the IV infusion with the NAD. And, you know, I think it was just him having to get comfortable with us probably more than anything to have somebody putting a needle in his arm. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. and so many people, you know, who are IV drug users find that, you know, it can be a trigger for trauma. It can, you know, even be a trigger for urges. And so I think working on that kind of systematic desensitization and being sensitive to that and cued into that is so important, um, you know, when working with them. And, and as a clinician, I, I echo Mike, um, you know, I have clients that will contact me 10, 11 o'clock at night and I know I need to pick up that phone because that person is struggling. Um, and, you know, if, if I know they're going to go through DTs, I absolutely always recommend a medically supported detox, um, as well as, you know, for benzos, just because of the health risks that come with that. We know, you know, alcohol is the number one preventable cause of death in the U.S. It's one of the most commonly used substances, um, but it, it's you know, very lethal to a draw from and, and, and same with benzos. And so um, definitely, and, and if there's 
um, you know, someone's homicidal or suicidal, you know, obviously we want to, we want to get them into a safe place. And then a lot of times they're discharged for follow-up care and that could look like outpatient or different IOP programs. And so um, I think that NAD just kind of gives them that next step to start that healing process, especially, um, you know, well, with meth and alcohol, you know, we know that it's more damaging to the insides before we start to see the effects on the outside. And so that's another thing that, you know, NAD is helpful with, with what rejuvenating the body mm-hmm. is, is right. how I would describe it. And so we also have, we have a doctor on staff. Um, he is over all the protocol and the, the treating as far as we also have the ability to uh, prescribe medications to help with, you know, depression, anxiety, sleep, sleeping issues, mm-hmm. whatever that might be. And then I think one really neat aspect of are the day-to-day, uh, the person that runs the day-to-day operations in the facility, in the clinic, um, you know, his name is Ryan and he was a paramedic and a firefighter and he's a veteran as well. Um, and so, you know, it's just a different approach. And I think that, you know, so let's just say that to say that this is a, what I like to tell people, a rapid medical, a rapid non-addictive medical detox getting through detox or detoxing is difficult and to be able to be aided in getting through detox without just staving it off like so much mat well i think Um, when somebody's coming in and the clients that have already been through it are able to say hey just get to day six get to day seven like this is going to be over so fast like it's not like what you've experienced before you're not going to go through that two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, like just push through, give it a week, give it a week, give it a week, and then bam, they're back. Right. It's literally that quickly. It's literally the worst day ever, back the next morning, makeup, hair done, new clothes, new person, haircuts, fingernail polish. I mean, it's just insane. It's literally, and I know when it's happening because they're going to be, you know, when I'm heading out of that office and that nurse is sitting in there with them in our room where, you know, we have a a certain room for people who are really struggling with the detox symptoms with, you know, TV recliners, blankets, dark room, blah, blah, blah. And I just walked in there. I was like, you're going to be somebody different tomorrow. And I can't wait to see it, you know, and this is not something that I would normally, I was so skeptical before I came here, you know, and then I, I talked with a friend of mine who was working here at the time and, you know, just like heard some stories and did some research. And I was like, let's just go see what this place is about. And then I remember like that first client that I saw come in and I'm like, holy cow, like, and then I'm like, you know, six days and I'm like, holy cow, like, whoa, (laughs) you know, for the, the same exact response, because it's just like, you can't believe what you're seeing. And it's, I, I wish I knew how to really say it, but it's no, just. I understand. It's hard because like so much of this becomes cliche, right? So much of it can become cliche really quick. And those are the things that, you know, I want to make sure that we're we're making sure that we're saying, hey, this is happening. Great. But it also, you know, it does require um, there to be support for NAD as well as more research around NAD. So, Stephanie, thank you for being a part of that. Michael, thank you for being a part of that. And um and your program, thanks for, for, for making it a core of your program. You know, you know, we do talk about, like earlier I asked a little bit about the idea that everyone goes through this because there is this talk about like, well, it all has to be individualized. And what, what ends up happening, what, what I'm seeing NAD in, in what you're talking about, and it should be said that ever since we started talking, I've been taking 100 milligrams a day just because I'm like, well, I got to know what's up. Right. Like, and, and there is like, for me, like, it's just a maintenance thing. And, and I have, and I have MS. So, so there's a large portion of like the idea that like, well, let's see what this is. I got an, I got an MRI in December and let's see what, what, what I can make happen. And, and if this is going to like help my system, um, then I, I want it to be helped. Right. Like, I mean, I use diet and other things like that. I don't know anything about this coenzyme, but 
um, if I can take it and I know you're getting results, then it's a nice, it's a nice little additive to my life. Um, so I, that's it for the questions I have. Is there anything that you guys want to kind of chime in on? I do want to mention, you know, I'm a, I'm an advocate for, uh, pregnant women and, and, uh, infants. Um, they are generally not treated the best, um, you know, if, if they're struggling with addiction and we are a punitive state with, uh, Garrett's law. Um, and so of course I'm always looking for options that are safe for pregnant women. I mean, we give pregnant women suboxone and methadone, um, which in theory is the better option rather than having them go through withdrawal because then we have no natal abstinence syndrome, mm -hmm. which just increases their chances of, you know, mortality and, and preterm labor and, and a slew of other things. And so, you know, Mike, when you were talking about the room that you have that has dim lights and a recliner and a comfort and space, that is what the research says helps mothers who are struggling with withdrawal. Um, and so uh, I was so excited when I reached out to the, the doctor, the medical director, and um, he said, this is absolutely safe for pregnant women. Um, I would compare it to kind of a B12 shot, you know, to assist them. And so now, you know, I'm able to say, hey, we have another option for pregnant women that's safe and can, can be helpful. And they offer these specialized spaces, um, especially if they were to have the baby, right? And they're still needing that support to detox. They can, you know, if they can bring their child with them, be in a low lit environment, a comfort environment, that's good, not just from for mama, but also for the baby. And so um, I really would like to gather, and that's another aspect of the study. We are looking to see if, if it is a pregnant client and um, collecting some data on that. And hopefully we can shed more light on that. Like, guys, this is what we need for these mothers and their, their babies. They're coming to us for assistance and for help. Let's not scare them away with punitive measures. Mm -hmm. We have a client now who's seven months pregnant that's been clean for about seven or eight days now. Um, and, you know, that's amazing, right? I think, you know, going back to kind of like the stigma around treatment and harm reduction, and then all of a sudden here we are with this NAD and it's the cure-all and blah, blah, blah. And I, you know, being in the recovery community myself, you know, I've had people say, you know, make kind of cracks and jokes and this and that about like what we're doing because you have that old school mentality of, you know, you just sweat it out. You just lay in the bed and shake and suffer and blah, and then you're clean. Well, it's 2021. It's not like that anymore. Um, and one of my favorite quotes of all time, especially as someone who's always pushing the limit in my personal life is don't expect ordinary people to understand extraordinary things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's something we're doing here is we're pushing the limits um, and we're doing something new and we're doing something that's, you know, not going to make a lot of sense to a lot of people, but it makes sense to us. And that's all that matters. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's important to recognize why is it okay to tell people to, you know, suffer it out, work it out because they struggle with an addiction which we know has so many components, biological, you know, uh, mental health, uh, there's genetic components, but we don't do that with other, other things, right? If somebody is, comes into the ER and they have appendicitis or, you know, they're struggling with, with pain or, you know, we want to keep them comfortable and we have compassion for them, but why not people who struggle with addiction? And what would it look like if we could just change that and be willing to challenge that stigma? Um, you know, would we have more people seeking treatment and feeling comfortable to reach out? You know, this brings up a final point of like, if this is so good for people that are going through um, detox, why aren't we introducing it into prisons and other places like that where people are forced to go through naked detox? Um, 
And with that, like we are, uh, we constantly call it a moral judgment. We call it moral values. We call it moral decisions. And those things uh, we know are not right. And it's just lies that we keep uh, perpetuating, not only um, n- not only within the recovery world, but in the um, in the world at large. And a lot of that is old ideas that we are all still living under the influence of. I want to thank you both for joining me and talking to me a little bit about NAD. Um, I'm excited about doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And uh, we will definitely be sending you a copy of the study once it's completed. Well, and then we'll, uh, if that's available, I'll be able to put a link in the, uh, in the description as well. Everyone that listens to this podcast knows that I am not here to promote anything or stand by any dogma. You like AA? Good on you. Go get it. You're down for California sober? No one's stopping you. MAT, yoga, meditation? Kill it will. NAD is not something that is going to help you in the long journey of recovery. Only you can do that. But from what I understand after hearing from those working with it is that it can help get someone through detox and thinking clearer faster. We lose so many in the course of detoxing. It can be so incredibly uncomfortable due to any stimulants opponent process or our bodies. If you have someone in your life that is having a hard time with detoxing, thinking clearly, and having not found anything that works, you may want to try and find a center that uses NAD therapy as part of their program. I want to thank Mike and Stephanie for bringing this great supplement to our attention, and you can find links to everything they're doing in the description of this episode. Please rate and review this podcast and or leave comments for this episode to help me better create helpful content. Support the show at anchor.fm or support me and my work at Patreon, where you will get access to unedited content as well as access to supporter group portrait sessions with me. I host workshops regularly, which are both open to the public and are a source of continuing education units for professionals. I also take a limited number of one-on-one clients every month, so contact me when you're ready to work together through martinjohn.com. I also accept financial support through Venmo at martinjohn underscore Garcia. So if you benefit from listening to this content, please consider supporting my efforts. Thank you for listening to the Recover Yourself podcast. And until next time, keep recovering yourself.